Hello, Namaste and good morning once again uh, in our next panel discussion. And the topic of the panel discussion is uh, redefining the literacy and digital transformation in the school education. And for this uh, topic uh, session, we have uh, a panelist starting with moderator Arugya Reddy, Petty Reddy, Principal, Ambassador School, Sarja. Welcome, sir. Welcome to the session. Ms. Asa Alexander, Principal, James Legacy School, Dubai. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Ms. So and the School Principal, Daniel uh, Maria for Private School, Dubai. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you. And, uh, we we'll start with this panelist only and the middle of the session, uh, Dr. Uh, Saima Rana, CEO Principal, James Ward Academy, Dubai will be joining. So I'm just sending over the virtual dice to uh, Mr. Arab Gereddi, sir, the moderator of the session. Uh, over to you, sir. Yes, good morning and thank you, Krishnaji, for the introduction. Well, uh, thank you so much, Digital Learning and IELTS for organizing this World Education Summit. We are indeed pleasure to start the first panel discussion for this 21st Education Summit. And I'm sure a couple of my panelists also will join us in due course. Uh, but with much of ado, I would just like to say the beginning comments. Now, all of us know that education sector these days uh, has a lot of buzzwords. Now, name it anything, we find it in education. Previously, we were little alien or maybe we were not so much involved like artificial intelligence, machine learning, design thinking, STEAM, STEM, SHAPE, STREAM. You name any acronym, education sector is part of it right now. Now, recently, the OECD survey demonstrates that the education industry has already 43% of learning management tools with technology embedded, like artificial intelligence and AI capabilities or augmented reality, as well as the virtual learning environments. But the report says that in the next three years, another 47% would be part of the AI capabilities. So, which means to say that almost close to 90% of the learning management tools would be on AI platform in the next three years. And this pandemic, I think, has pushed us to be more edtech savvy and has drastically shifted due to the present scenario of the pandemic, where we all depend on the virtual learning. And research again shows that 88% of educators say that technology should be the core part of education. So we have witnessed in a way in the last one and a half year, all the principles, including me, a paradigm shift in the whole approach to the education. The teachers who were reluctant to start even a laptop or a device are now only with it. So that is the paradigm shift. Well, to begin with, I once again welcome Dr. Saima for this panel discussion. Welcome, ma'am. Good to have you on the floor. Uh, my first question, uh, I would uh, give it to Dr. Asha because she has been the pioneer in technology with KGS. And I'm sure she has more experience than me, at least, uh, in integrating technology in the classroom. Uh, so, Dr. Asha, as a principal, um, uh, we have a greater role in equipping our schools. Uh, one is hardware, software, as well as empowering teachers to integrate technology. So given that context, the integrations that happen within the school are meant, or the primary focus of those interventions and integrations is to raise the learning and to raise the attainment of students. Uh, would you show some uh, focus on that? How you were able to set those targets and how did you uh, make it reachable or a smart goal that you have attained? Thank you for your question. Uh, primarily, I think when you have to integrate technology, you have to look at the context. Uh, you have to be aware of the tools that are prevalent in the scenario and see what is most suitable for your school. There is a difference between transforming the school and digitizing the school. Sometimes we just bring in technology 
for the sake of uh, you know uh, bringing it in to say our school is digital and we we bring in tools that are not relevant so we need to spend some time understanding and learning about these tools and seeing what impact it has in my school uh, nine years ago we decided to go digital and uh, we made sure that we understood why we are transforming we needed to see what is the purpose of this transformation so we looked at freeing up teachers time with a purpose we wanted to make sure that we brought in tools that would actually make our teachers more productive one of the tools we used was an adaptive learning tool it was called mind spark it was for the teaching of mathematics what i wanted was that the teacher should be free to attend to children with special needs or children at the lower end of the learning spectrum on a one to one so when the larger numbers in the class were directing their own learning through this adaptive learning tool it freed up the teachers to give that specialist time to children who were really challenged and spend one to one time so this is one of the ways in which we made sure that uh, the teacher was being used productively we we had a purpose in bringing in that tool into the classroom similarly i found that uh, earlier teachers spend a lot of time grading papers you know uh, as assessing tests short tests that happened in the classroom and the feedback was given the next day or the next time the teacher met the students so the feedback was not timely uh, the teacher didn't have an overview of what was happening in the classroom and therefore i didn't find the lessons as uh, effective as i do now when they use uh, assessment for learning tools like padlet and mentimeter and quizzes it gives the teacher and the class an immediate overview of how the class is progressing and the teacher can tweak the lessons on the go so this has enabled teachers to be more productive in class and students know exactly where they're going wrong immediately in gems we also use a portal called phoenix which enables our parents to interact with the teachers in a timely manner we don't have to wait for open houses when teachers have actually lost track of what exactly they wanted to convey about the child uh, after every lesson the teacher is able to interact with the parent give audio feedback or written feedback and parent and student are able to derive greater benefit uh, using these portals so i've given you some examples in our context where we've adopted tools with a purpose in mind so i think all transformation should uh, look at the context of the school and uh, people educators should actually learn about the tools and see what is relevant in their context because just bringing in tools for the sake of digitizing or making uh, you know a digital school won't serve the purpose thank you asha ma'am i'm pretty sure as the saying goes it's the principal who carries the banner of technology and banner of adaptability and i think you have well portrayed the adaptive tools that are used in your schools now you also cited the effect of such integration where the teacher gets more time the teacher also has a lot of uh, spare time to cater to the uh, students of determination or the scn as well as the gifted and talented so my next question would be to uh, miss naira uh when teachers use effectively integrate these technologies and the apps that some of them uh miss asha mentioned like padlet or quizlet everything feedback is immediate so there is a danger there the parent or the student also would know what is their strength at the same time what is their area of improvement sometimes it could also bounce on to the teacher to say that this particular concept was not well taught or maybe not well understood it can be interpreted in different contexts so uh, taking that into context we also have reversed the roles of teachers now as advisor as an uh, content expert as well as a coach so there is altogether a paradigm shift from the traditional approach and this is a huge change a massive change at the same time all of us are change agents as the leaders of the school so how did you manage 
this change management and do you suggest uh, any easy or practical ways of um, such great leadership uh, thank you for the question i will just build on the previous answer from dr asha as well when she mentioned you know all the tools uh, we know that our conversation now was shifted from are we using technology or not to how we are using technology to support differentiation to support the role of a teacher as facilitator in the classroom when we start building on that and we start that journey in my current school since 2012 we link it all the time to our concept of inquiry approach in the classroom we need to differentiate learning as a teacher if i am just going to use my old methods as instructor i will not be able to do that as a facilitator i need to plan ahead for my gifted student for my students who will require additional support and even for every student by the end to create what we call the individualized learning approach in the classroom. While doing that, we were obliged, of course, to seek the support of technology, which will save our time, our effort as educators. As you said, that vision need to be guided by the principal and the senior leadership team in the school. So we started ourselves by doing surveys using mentimeters using padlet in our current meetings as tools to model that experience for teachers then we started as well by creating a pioneer class in every grade level to use technology we provide the appropriate equipment to the teacher facing afterwards the covid 19 lockdown requirements into two years ago it was an easy shift for our teachers to move from the in-campus learning to the online learning and that's why we were able to meet the requirements within two weeks build our classroom because using teams for us was just another tool or another approach that supports the learning through that coming to the students and the parents you're absolutely right that journey needs to be conducted with all stakeholders. So we train our students inside classroom to use technology, of course, for assessment for learning and for as well learning different subjects. So we model that examples not only in specific subject taught in English, but even, you know, in Arabic Islamic subject as well. So technology was part of our integrated journey with all the transdisciplinary learning model in our school. And also for parents, we were using specific tools to make them understand that communication could happen in a meaningful way through different channels. It's not only via teachers conference or only via face-to-face -face meeting. It could happen as well through conversation through the online learning tool that we are you used after for digital platform for learning and from that we were able to build all the picture of technology in the classroom so we're not talking anymore about integrating technology we're talking about models of learning using different tools which technology become of course one of the most valuable tool for us by the end well, thank you. Well said, ma'am. I think you thank started you. from the point of inquiry and then integration and then the transdisciplinary approach. And now we look at the models of learning where we are seasoned and we are matured enough now uh, and all our teachers, all our stakeholders as well to take the uh, journey on board. Now, uh, my next question, integrating all these, uh, what Ms. Naira said, uh, to Dr. Saima. Now we have these taglines everywhere like STEM, STEAM, STREAM. Uh, and now the latest one which has come is SHAPE. Now SHAPE is uh, social sciences, humanities, arts for people and the economy. So that is SHAPE. That's a new acronym which is being used uh, more or less an opposite to stem i can call it as okay because stem is more on the science mathological everything 
whereas shape is on the humanities front okay now given the context of point of enquiry and the modes of learning as well as the transdisciplinary approach uh, how do we balance both the disciplines and uh, would you throw some light about your experience in your school hello hi yes of course i mean i think it builds upon what colleagues have said earlier you know it really very much i think for me it's very very simple um, and and colleagues have said it earlier it's about the enhancement it's not about the replacement of anything it's about enhancing educational experiences for all our children whoever those children are and that's where the differentiated approach comes in i think and i think the same can be said about the curriculum so in in a previous years we saw a lot of the steam the technological advancements and developments in certain areas of the uh, curriculum so you saw a lot in technology you saw a lot in perhaps um the mathematical um, aspects of a curriculum but i think what um, if i may the global pandemic what the global pandemic has done it's done many things for many people but what it did for education was really interesting because it fast forward us into a position whereby we were all forced to upskill and we heard earlier all stakeholders were if you like forced to upskill whether they were parents students schools leaders we were all put in a position where we knew that if we had to get through this now 18 months which we didn't know then period of time technology was the thing that was going to help us serve our children and deliver our curriculum because we couldn't stop you know there was no choice we had to continue the teachers had to continue schools had to continue so in a way rather than using technology just to deliver simple um, um methods of teaching we were forced to um use it as an enabler for enhancing our curriculum and there were some easy sort of wins there because we've been using using technology people had laptops people had ipads and and mobile phones etc but there were some really encouraging um methodologies used so for example the use of artificial intelligence the use of augmented reality so no longer did you need a science lab or a drama studio or a music studio to actually play instruments or carry out science experimentation of course there was some loss of experience there but you were able to use augmented reality to be able to do these practical um, elements cover the practical elements of the curriculum and um, things like um looking at a sort of virtual reality augmented reality and artificial intelligence so there was those are three that really came into their own right rather than using technology as a static a uh, piece of resource that we were using in previous years and research has shown that's what we were doing in previous years in a way the global pandemic put us in a position i feel lots of bad stuff has happened as a result of the pandemic and i don't underestimate that but something that was really good that came out for me very much um, at my educational establishment was very much the use of technology to increase aspiration and ambition for what we are delivering to our children and how we are delivering to our children i think education has fast forwarded and moved beyond where it could have been pre covid had we not had the use of technology and a company like gems education for example works tirelessly in ensuring that future um, technologies are uh, recognized and appreciated so our founder and chairman mr sunny barki is a genuine inventor he's always thinking of new ways of using technology introducing technology but also implementing he loves action so as gems and myself and my colleague here from gems asha um we very much have huge ambition for the use of technology and that technology isn't just lumped into a curriculum it's actually carefully with a nuanced approach detailed implementation takes place across our curriculum so we it's if you like it's fit for purpose we use it and we heard earlier from colleagues we use it where it needs to be used and where it doesn't need to be used we do not use it and so in a way it's grown our curriculum experience for all our children but also our teachers as well they're teaching differently an example would be in an art lesson the other day i walked in and um, our teacher our children were visiting an gallery in london but they were doing that through augmented reality in an art lesson and the feeling and the way in which they were interacting with this gallery 
and the awe and the wonder wearing their goggles and you could hear them they were standing and they were going oh, wow oh my god wow they were there and it's so different to to them using a beautiful art book which are beautiful and i love books but it was a different emotion that was being if you like released uh, in terms of an education experience and the same very quickly I, I would say about an essay i read the other day of a shakespeare um sonnet where a child had written something having read uh, shakespeare but then had used their virtual reality experience to actually visit shakespeare's um house in stoke and kent and when you compared the two pieces of work that he had written one before the virtual reality introduction and one after the after was so much more powerful and the power was from the feeling he was able to sort of connect with it so i think those are just two examples of where i have found technology to really enhance the art and which are really important but ultimately in my opinion as a school leader and somebody who has worked in technology for a very long time you know technology will not take over education and it will not take over our teachers and leaders as we all know and as we've seen because there was lots of talk about having robots as teachers if you if you remember uh, very many years ago were we going to take over were robots going to take over our um, jobs as teachers but that's not going to happen because what underpins a great lesson and a great experience the resources like technology are important but ultimately the passion and the love and the care of the teacher is most important and i think the pandemic has shown us that in recent times thank you thank you dr simon i think yes you have touched on a few of the areas which our colleagues also have already escalated in a way and i am quite thrilled with the uh, wow effect or the wow experience of students i can also narrate uh, a few uh, i mean times when i visited on my learning walks uh, most of the teachers of signs and maths they use gizmos which is more of a simulation and children love those they never want the science period to be completed or the science lesson to end they want more and more simulations to experience it and the 3d images that have come now previously it used to be a drawing or something maybe a diagram but now they can experience it for example the functions of heart it's so vivid and they get so enthralled with that and it definitely has the wow effect similarly in maths also they use a lot of geo boards where they can actually work on the shapes and when it comes to the literacy they have the story weaver or the word wall where they connect their own stories and they create wonderful creative writings but i think those have become the in a way the attractions for the students despite being online sometimes remotely attending the classes but these have enabled them to experience the school and all together it's a transdisciplinary approach at the same time a multisensory approach so uh, from normal if i call it though uae no school has the mundane routine traditional teaching but from a typical traditional approach we have gone into a multidisciplinary approach where students have become experts more than the teachers in fact to use smart technology and i do find sometimes when i go to conduct an assembly or something when my screen does not get reflected immediately they guide me and i'm quite thrilled and I always tell them thank you for doing it okay <laughs> so we have moved a lot i know and all schools have also adopted to erps fims and most of our work now is on project management we are using a lot of templates of those from a manual documents we have moved to pms now and i think teachers also have adopted to that so given that ready access to attendance to time tables to health records discipline or behavioral issues including grades and reports so my next question to asha ji will be uh, this integration or the modeling of technology has given or has automated most of the mundane tasks which the teachers used to do of course you have touched upon that in the beginning but still i, I just want more of input from you like the administrative work for teachers grading papers assessing learning uh, patterns replying to general emails or questions uh, there are schools who have also used or who use chatbots now so this is more like a faqs frequently asked questions are answered by the chatbots 
So no more teacher or the reception is, is required. So we have gained a lot of time now in terms of saving or sparing. And now how productively do we plan or how do we maximize that spare time of teachers so that it goes into productive utilization? Yes, Ashama. I, I feel that, uh, you know, we have to strategize. We have to, the technology and uh, using technology effectively and freeing up the time of teachers or administrators uh, means that we use that time productively. So the, the leaders must have an idea what they want to do with the teachers. It's not that you free up time and uh, teachers are not as productive as we want them to be. So one of the things we looked at in our school was when we get an opportunity to learn through this pandemic, we wanted to return to the wider world. So we decided to have teachers collaborating with teachers worldwide using the technology platform, which now most schools are using worldwide on account of the pandemic. So teachers were able to actually now conduct classes uh, with children in other parts of the world using technology. So when we freed up the time for teachers uh, within the classroom by taking away mundane tasks and administrative tasks, they got more time to have longer durations of conducting lessons with students as far away as um, Gold Coast in Australia, in Malawi, in India. So children learned about the context of those schools using these platforms. This is just one way where we uh, use the time that was available by releasing, you know, the tasks like uh, filling up some uh, forms or sheets or grading students. So every school should ensure that uh, the time that is released is used productively. For that, you have to strategize. It has to be the culture of the school to make sure that we return what we have learned, not just to our GEMS community or to the UAE community, but worldwide. So we are actually pushing not to work in silos, but to make sure that we connect the entire world through technology. It isn't enough if some of us progress, if the whole world has to change, we have to be the harbingers of that change. If we have uh, led with technology, we have benefited from technology. Now is our time to return that to the rest of the world. So we are on a mission to make sure that whenever teachers have the time, a lot of our teachers are engaged in uplifting girls' education in India. We're working with uh, children in India. We are making sure that our students speak in Hindi to them. They use their mobile phones. And we want gender equity. We want to make sure that all girls get some kind of education. So there are wonderful ways in which technology is being used. And this is possible because teachers have more time on their hands away from mundane tasks. So this is something that uh, we are really passionate about and uh, sort of defines who we are as a school. So the culture of the school and the strategies the school has will define how we shape uh, the time that is released and given to teachers. Well said. Thank you, Asha, ma'am. Yes, uh, it's the passion and the culture and the ethos of the school which has to be developed. And as I said in the beginning, principal is the banner holder for all such initiatives and passion which comes in. And being in UAE, all of us know we attempt a lot of uh, benchmark tests like asset. IBT, uh, GL Progressive Test, CAT4, so many. And we also notice that every report that comes, individualized report or the personalized report comes in with the strengths, with the areas of improvement, and even with the guidance. To the extent CAT4 gives us even the projected scores by the end of the year or by the end of the, for, for the board exams as well, uh, in CBS, it is grade 10. In IGCSE, it is the GCSE exams, everything. So given that context, I think all of us as leaders have a lot of access to a lot of ready-made information, a ready reckoner that we are with in terms of the attainment of students, the work of the students, as well as 
the performance of teachers as well. Now, uh, Asha ma'am also stated about the Gold Coast. It could be in Australia, it could be any part of the world. And recently when I was reading a book, I understood that even the library books could be read out by the same author using artificial intelligence. So this is being given by uh, Bidu, a China-made um, uh, app where the library book, any book, it could be, for example, if the book is written by, um, let us say, Chetan Bhagat, for example. So the voice of Chetan Bhagat is taken in snippet of three seconds or so. And then if we switch on the app, Chetan Bhagat will be reading out the entire book that he has written himself. What an experience for students, definitely. They would definitely love to listen to the voice of the author. So that's just an example I'm quoting here. But given the context now, uh, with readily available resources, we have the entire world market in front of us with the different apps for each of the languages, specialization into different subjects. At the same time, there are also certain threats. There are also certain uh, well-being questions that would be at uh, school for different stakeholders. So it is inevitable for us that we need to have an ICT strategy or the ICT policy for every school. Now, I just want to get an idea. What are some of the highlights of the IT, ICT strategy? Or what would be those non-negotiables that we need to include in the ICT policy of the school? So may I request uh, Dr. Saima? Absolutely. I think that, um, look, a good head teacher, a good school, ensures that everything aligns with their school improvement plan. They ensure that no matter what it is that they're introducing, whether it's careers guidance, whether it's um, IT strategy, whether it's um, employability or languages enrichment, whatever it is, it has to align with the school improvement plan. And the school improvement plan, of course, is um, really based around the needs of the community, the school community. So in that respect, a good IT strategy would look at, I would say, broadly, the following areas. It would look at the leadership and management how does technology, how will technology help aid, support, guide, and facilitate our leadership and management in this school? And the leadership and management of the school would be not just the senior leadership, it would be the middle leadership, it would be the student leadership, it would be the parent leadership, and it would be the teacher leadership. It would then look at behavior, uh, personal development, and welfare, if you like, of children. How will the information technology strategy support this area, crucial area of work, which incorporates safeguarding, incorporates things like um, behavior, bullying, uh, abuse, etc. online. You know, there's a social etiquette that needs to be taught. So how will that support our work in that area? It will, of course, have to align with curriculum assessment and reporting. How do we use information technology to enhance the experiences of the three key stakeholders, the teachers, the parents, and the, and the students, to be able to monitor, track, record, put in interventions. How will IT help us do that? And we know there's some fantastic, fantastic software programs at the moment using artificial intelligence where neuroscientists have developed some amazing, amazing resources to be able to tell when a child is absolutely comfortable and competent and, and, and really, really happy with the curricular content of, of an area. And when they're not, by just the click of a finger, how long does it take somebody, a child, to move their mouse from one place to another can show people, can show us as educators how confident they are in this area of work. Assessment for learning can be very much facilitated with the use of technology. The fourth area is very much about teaching and learning. How can technology support our teaching and learning experience? We talked a little bit and we've heard a lot about you know, virtual reality, augmented reality, artificial intelligence. How, does it, how do the experiences within a classroom actually expand now and go beyond that classroom and, and move away from the four walls of a classroom through the use of technology. How does technology help our children progress with the progression in every episode, in every experience of a classroom um, uh, activity is, is a non-negotiable. So that's the fourth area. And I suppose loosely then the fifth area, would be, which I would call corporate services, so what are the corporate services in a school, you know, the, the um, finances, the HR, the, the catering, the resource management, the site services, 
how how will technology support us and help us to really enhance and we heard a little bit earlier really support efficient efficient running protocols and procedures of school operation so for example instead of having somebody take registers by hand or understand when staff are coming in and, and out in terms of punctuality attendance safeguarding child protection how can technology help us do that so i think those are the five sort of areas that if i were putting an it technology um information technology policy together i would ensure that it aligned with my school improvement plan those would be my five areas and of course then you have to monitor and track it and there are many means in, in it that one can use to monitor and track um how effective and how successful um, an IT policy is, and again, I think we talked. I think we talked earlier about outcomes. Um, it goes back to the outcomes. How successful are, are our children? And the success is not just measured in how many um, children went to the top universities. Of course, that's what we want. But success can be me measured in, in means of how many children have gone in to be an apprenticeship uh, apprentice, and in turn, travel the world. Um, be a volunteer, be a philanthropist. How many children have done that with the power of education underpinned with technology because ambitions and, ambitions and aspirations have grown? So that's how I would um, answer that question. Well, thank you, Dr. Saima. I think you have encapsulated it clearly that the purpose as well as teaching learning are the key areas and the ICT strategy should be embedded with the school improvement plan. Uh, which is more realistic and more measurable. Well, I think we have a couple of questions here. Uh, I'll, I'll just uh, take them uh, maybe at a later stage, but just to give heads up, uh, more or less, there are a couple of questions which are almost uh, similar. Now, the major challenge uh, for any leader in the digital disruption or the digital transformation is the leader being outdated. That's a major challenge I would consider. If I know that my students are on Insta, if I know that my students are on Snapchat, if I know that my students are on Facebook, I need to be on those as well. And I need to understand what it means to be on Insta, what it means to be on Snapchat or what it means to be on FB. Unless I master those skills and I am aware of those factors, I would never be a successful leader. So the major challenge or the major setback for us is not acknowledging that digital world is the future of the world. And if my students who are in grade 10 or grade 8 or grade 7, in the next 10 years, they are going to be professionals. And if I don't prepare them for that professional life, which is going to come after 5 to 10 years, I am the most outdated person in the industry or in the school. So that is the greatest challenge I would consider for any educational leader. Well. Uh, coming back to the discussion, uh, UAE has taken a great leap in integrating technology or modeling technology. And around the weekend, we have the expo. Uh, so that is the main, I mean, uh, headline everywhere. And that is showcasing the country's growth and prosperity as well. So th there are five big ideas that UAE has taken to with all the schools as part of technology integration. And the five big ideas are, the first one is perception, second one is representation and reasoning, third one is learning, and the fourth is natural interaction, while the fifth is the societal impact. Now, whether it is artificial intelligence, augmented reality, or virtual reality, or the design thinking, or even the machine learning or deep learning, these are critical five big ideas. Now, I would just request each of the panelists to show some light on any of those five big ideas of UAE and how you want to take them or how you have been already implementing them in your schools. You can opt in. You can. Yes, Ms. Naida. So uh, if we're talking about first, you know, our leadership uh, responsibility as you said each leader is upskilling himself first to be able to cope with the team and challenge the team sometime with additional questions whenever it's needed yes indeed it's very important to interact with the students to interact with the teachers to interact with our IT management team in order to build 
the technology inside the classroom. I myself, I've been an online facilitator since 2000 exactly, and I've seen how that field has been also growing from one day to another. As a lifelong learner, I'm not talking only about myself, I'm talking about each member in our community, because we need to be updated with the latest technology to enhance our learning inside classrooms. Coming to the five areas that we talk about and also in relation to the expo, we started first by understanding the concept and the purpose of such a huge, maybe one lifetime event that we will be attending for almost six months and how we can enhance learning with our students using the information that is really in our hands. For sure, virtually, we, we have been attending several meetings about the Expo, but we're starting as well our field trip very early in October, according to our units of inquiry. So we build all our curriculum this academic year around the Expo. We have been working two years back as well to enhance the learning of our students and to make them understand what opportunity is in their hands in order to make sure that we reach that stage. Coming to the virtual reality and how that has supported us during the pandemic time and even when we were not allowed to take trips to uh, any places, we continue our learning journey with the Expo expectation. We continue as well to upskill our students to use the different ways of communications and channel to seek information which enable us to open our service to the external community of parents and any stakeholders or staff member our community to know more as well about that event. And that was a good example of innovation and creativity that we work hard on it for almost two years right now. Now it's time to see the results of all that hard work when our students will be actually visiting the expo booth and benefiting from all prior knowledge that they have been aware of it before going to the actual trip. Thank, Thank you, you uh, Ms. Naira. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, Ms. Asha or Dr. Saima on the five big ideas. I'm happy for Ms. Asha to go next. Ms. Asha to get next if okay, you'd like, fine. I'm happy to go next. I can go next. Um, I, so, so in terms of the, the big ideas, so at Gems World Academy, what we have five specialisms, and they are the uh, Institute of Language. We have the biggest language offer at Gems World Academy. We have inclusion, so we're an all-inclusive school, regardless of your starting point, we'll take you in, and we're a top-performing international baccalaureate school. We have enrichment and opportunity, which is all about sports and opportunity, um, expressive arts, etc., for our children. So we have over 131 um, clubs for our children after school. And we have high performance. We're a high performing international baccalaureate school all through from nursery to um, the term program. And our final one, which really is something I'm very connected to, is enterprise, social impact, and innovation which is just so beautifully aligned to the expo. And of course, the expo, as you say, with the five big ideas, the expo, in a nutshell, is really about being entrepreneurial, being a, um, a charitable uh, person who gives and looks after their planet and looks after their people who perhaps don't have as much as what some of us have, and is also about invention. And again, I go back to our chairman, Mr. Sunny Rocky, who's a great role model, because he is all three of those. He's, a, he's an entrepreneur, as we know, he is a philanthropist, one of one of the biggest hearts he has, and he's an inventor through and through. So for us at GEMS and GEMS Education and GEMS World Academy, these three areas form our specialism. And that specialism, we absolutely have enhanced through the use of technology. So very quickly, I'll give you three examples. So enterprise, what we've done is through augmented reality, because of the pandemic, but we will continue, we have provided careers, education, and advice and guidance for our children, in particular in grade 11 and 12. How have we done that? So for example, we believe education serves two purposes. It serves the purpose of ensuring that children are educated. They learn about things. They gain knowledge, not rote knowledge, but they gain knowledge. But the second is 
to ensure that they pre are prepared for the world beyond school. And what that, as I said earlier, can look like is universities, but it can also look like traveling, philanthropy, internships, apprenticeships, a job, being a housewife or a house husband, whatever it is. We want our children to have choices. So what we've done is through that careers, the second part, the second objective we have here is in terms of preparation, we have ensured that our children are able to have access to over 500 businesses using augmented reality because it doesn't matter where they are in the world, the world has suddenly become flat. We're able to interconnect with people that we would have never been able to connect with because it would have just been too hard. We would have thought it would have been really difficult. But I go back, the pandemic and technology has allowed us to raise our game and raise our aspirations for everybody, not just for some. And so our children are able to be interviewed, have psychometric testing, speak like a TED um, in a TED um, TED style conference um, with an, a, a huge virtual audience, and the kids are speaking. And we all know when you're speaking on a panel or in front of a, a big public audience, it can be quite nerve wracking. So they're getting that experience. So we're using it for the entrepreneurial part in terms of careers advice. In terms of social impact, we're a school that believes in giving. Our mission is education for a better world because we believe through education, we are going to improve our beautiful world. We're going to give and help those that are underprivileged, less advantaged than ourselves. And so one of the things our children do is they raise money through sustainability, through ensuring that they are giving to charity. But what they're doing is using online facilities to be able to, uh, we heard from Ms. Asha earlier, we're using online uh, facilities to be able to educate people in poorer countries. So we heard a, a fantastic example of the Indian um, schools connection where children are speaking in Hindi and, and so on. That's what we're doing here at Gems World Academy, something very similar where our children are using technology to identify needs of a community that is less fortunate, less advantaged as themselves. So we're working with a school in Africa at the moment, for example. And then the final one is invention, innovation. Once again, technology has allowed us to People are going to the moon now. They're really going to the moon. And they're using technology that is smaller than the chip in our phones to be able to do that. That is amazing. We live in a great world where possibilities are just limitless. So we're teaching our children to be able to invent things. So recently, one of our children, two of our, uh, two separate examples I'll give very quickly, have invented the most amazing technological solutions to, for example, one of their cats lost a leg. And they've created through looking at algorithms and coding a, a leg for it for their cat. I mean, that's really helping someone. It's helping something and it's making the world a better place. So it's things like that when we look at um, technology and specialisms for our school and then the connection with Expo. It couldn't be a better place to be Dubai where we've got the great world's greatest show coming. And it, un it's underpinned by being an entrepreneur, having high, high ambitions, having being part of charity and social impact, so being a good global citizen, and then invention, using technology and other means to be able to really deliver. And I want to finish by saying, you talk very interestingly about being outdated. I think you can't be outdated. You don't have a choice anymore. You cannot be in leadership and lead schools if you are not up to date with what's happening around education and the world economy, actually. And I think it's not just about technology. I, I would defy any head teacher to say that she has not kept up to date with everything that's going on in education, whether it's assessment for learning, whether it's differentiation, whether it's sports um, and enrichment, whether it's mental health and well-being, which is huge just before pandemic, it was huge, and it still is, and it should be, quite rightly so. And of course, technology. So we as head teachers are always, and as teachers, always learning, we're always upskilling we're always and that is how teachers of the world became superheroes in the global pandemic because they're used to this they're used to being resilient they used to say it, it doesn't matter we've got to get on and we've got to do it so the outdated concept is really interesting for many i would say industries but i would say it's not that much of a challenge in education because we're very used to being able to keep up to date and on our toes thank you dr simon that, that's great I think you touched upon all the five areas. Uh, Miss Asha, would you like to add anything? Please unmute. To improve ma society. If yeah, you're okay. Yes. 
I, I feel that our education must meet the needs of society. That's why we have, uh, you know, we must use technology today to make sure we are uh, bringing the world closer together, which is what the Expo is doing. If you look at its three themes of sustainability, opportunity, and mobility, all have uh, its roots if we use technology well. And I would like for all of our schools to grow students who are useful to society. That is the purpose of education. And if we can use technology to effect that, whether it is being philanthropic or uh, inventing or being entrepreneurial or uh, you know leading the world into a different direction, but bringing the whole world closer together, that would be the best use of technology. And so in our schools, we provide opportunities for children to experience all of this. I'm very passionate about embedding the sustainable development goals worldwide. It is not enough for a few of our schools to lead on this. And if as many schools in the world can continue to create that ripple effect using technology well to reach uh, into the recesses of places where there is poverty, where there is not so much uh, information available, we owe it as part of uh, us being educators to use this technology to give opportunity to those who don't have opportunity because i think intelligence is there in every place but opportunity is not and technology is going to provide that opportunity to the poorest of the poor and we uh, are not about you know growing larger or better in our own little uh, well we want to make sure that we are able to give as much as we can to the rest of the world through this platform. So I think that is the purpose of our education, to make global citizens who have an impact on the world and who are able to share all their learning through the use of technology. So if educators can use technology with this purpose in mind, that it is for use to uh, spread whatever learning you can have worldwide, then the impact across the world is going to be faster and greater. Well, thank you, ma'am. I think, yes, you made the fine point. Uh, integrating technology with the SDGs to prepare the global citizens is the key role of every school and every school leader. Uh, that's definitely the prime focus of every school. Well, as we come uh, closer to the end, I, I mean, uh, my just one question is, uh, I always believe that technology came first and the principal as technology leader came later. <laughs> okay. At least in my case, I must admit that. Okay. Uh, so every principal learned it by doing, and I'm sure all of us maybe without any doubt have learned it by doing. Uh, so now that we have so many aspiring leaders who must be the audience, definitely. And even, even me as a learner still, uh, what would be that learning journey that you would like to share with us or give that guidance to the aspiring leaders? It, it is an open question to anyone. If you can just give uh, one or two liners, what would be that one advice or one guidance to the aspiring leaders or even to the leaders, existing leaders? I think I would. I would... Yeah. Okay, okay, fine. Please. Yes, Miss Naira, please. Please unmute. It's interesting how we all jump in to give advice. It's the job of a principal, right? We were all ready to give it. Okay, fine. Yes, Miss Naira. Uh, as we are all lifelong learners, as we're saying all the time, technology was coming as a natural learning journey with all other subjects. Even before becoming a teacher, I'm sure all of us, we are educators and teachers. So I used to be an ICT teacher while being as well a math teacher before being a PYP coordinator, MYP, and then, you know, acting principal and principal by the end. So learning technology is a natural learning journey that enable all of us to reach that stage. It's not only about technology when we are talking, any new ideas, 
To be innovative is not just to create something from the scratch, it's to use a different context in a meaningful way for our community. This is how I'm developing innovation all the time with all our leaders. And here, when I'm saying leaders in every school, I'm sure all the leaders will agree with me that each voice counts. Not only the senior leadership team, nor you know the grade level leaders or the homeroom teacher at that stage, but every voice, even the students and the parents as well in our community. So one tip that will help each one of us to become a real world of education and one tip as well that help all of us to overcome the challenge of pandemic and seeking as an opportunity for growth for each school is to continue learning, learning in general. Any learning curve will help us to do a better mission as school principal. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Naira. That's great. Yes. Ms. Asha. Yes, what I would like to leave the audience with is always look at your context. Look at the capabilities of your learners. Look to understand what are the needs of the people because every digital journey is different. Every school is different. Every context is different. Don't try to replicate what is happening in another school or another region. Take the ideas, assess them, reflect on them, learn as much as you can about them and use them as effectively as you can in your own context. Just as people are unique, Every school and every context is unique. Every every time frame is unique, and uh, we don't have to uh, replicate what we see in another school in our region or around the world. We need to be able to assess, reflect, and use technology as best as we can to meet a purpose that the school has. So look at your structure, look at your strategies, look at your culture, the capabilities of your students and above all the customer and what needs are to be met and then if you if you think about that i'm sure you will be able to use technology as effectively in any part of the world thank you asha ma'am i know yeah it's a purpose which is more critical for us well yes uh, dr saima would you uh, yes i'll be very yes i'll be very brief but i would leave with two pieces of advice one is um you know, never forget, as a leader, we've heard earlier, we are all teachers, I'm sure. You know, I, I'm a teacher myself, I still teach. Um, education is, is not something that can be replaced by something. And, and we, I said that a little earlier. Education is like um, romance, it's like culture, it's like religion. It's one of those things that it, it happens through relationships and back and forth, back and forth. And it happens through care and kindness and, and nurture and respect and all of those things. So as a leader, always remember that, you know, we, we're not working in a manufacturing company. We're not working in an organization that's selling a product. You know, some people define it as that. It's not that. Education is something that is so special and it, and it, it, and it changes lives. It changes societies. It changes countries. It changes the world. And so always remember that the job that you will be doing as a leader is, is just such an amazing job. It's such a wonderful job. And there is no better job to contribute to our wonderful world than the job of a leader, I would say, or a teacher. And I think the second thing I would say is that you have to be passionate and you have to believe in your own leadership skills, even if they're not brilliant, even if you're not there yet. Because like you said, we all started from somewhere. We all started as classroom teachers and we've you know, been promoted or headhunted or seen as people that can lead a group of people or a community. So you have to believe in yourself, especially when others aren't. And there'll be many, many times as leaders that no one will believe in you. But you have to stand there and believe in yourself. And that's what great leaders do. Thank you, Dr. Saima. Well said. I think, yes, as we come to the end of the panel discussion, I would like to wrap up to say that technology or change is inevitable. And the future is with technology. All of us experience it in every aspect of life. And I think education, for whatever reason, at least the pandemic has pushed us to adopt technology at a faster rate. Maybe we would have adopted it at a later stage, but I think pandemic is definitely a blessing and a boon for all of us, especially for educators. And I think our children are going to be the future and they are going to have much advanced technology than what they're going to use right now and which we struggle with right now. 
and i think so technology and modeling technology is the reason for all schools to exist henceforth that should be the call of every leader to embed now that all schools are reopening all of us are getting back to the school with normal students and teachers in campus i think we should always maintain the same tempo of integrating that technology and modeling the technology those students return physically to the school i think the tech that we used the tech that we have been embedded with should continue and that is going to be the future for all our children well it was nice sharing your ideas and interacting with all of you thank you so much asha ma'am miss naira and dr saima thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you sir uh Uh, it was a wonderful panel discussion uh, discussed by your panelists and well moderated by your session moderator i'm sure our delegate would have very good learning and thoughtful take away from this session uh, moving further with our uh, uh, speaker certificate distribution as a token of thank you starting with mr arogya reddy pandey reddy principal ambassador school sarja thank you sir thank you so much sir Dr. Saima Rana, CEO, Principal, Jim Ford Academy, Dubai. Thank you, ma'am. Miss Asa Alexander, Principal, Jim's Legacy School, Dubai. Thank you, ma'am, for the session. Thank you so much. And last but not least, uh, uh, Naira Hamdi. School principal Dar Al Marifa Private School, Dubai. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. So that's all for this session. Uh, the other session will be uh, scheduled according to the uh, event agenda. For this time, uh, we are closing for this session. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. All the best. Thank you. Thank you.